Hey everybody, what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined today by JJ Zacharyson from FanDuel, who's here to tell us who he's buying and selling as we look forward to more football action here in Week 6. What's happening, JJ? I'm good, man. I'm, I'm probably better than Baker Mayfield right now, so that's at least a plus. I don't know, man. I know he's not feeling great, but he's got a monstrous bank account. I know you win a lot, but I, I feel like he's in a good place, so... I'll, I'll buy Baker Mayfield's life. I think things are all right there. But he's not the only quarterback that I would buy this week, nor would you, because you're also buying Kyler Murray, who's been a top quarterback in each of the first five weeks. Why are you buying him going forward? Yeah, I feel like perception doesn't really equal reality with uh, Kyler Murray right now because of the way the Cardinals offense is generally played to start the season. Uh, but Kyler Murray is a top 10 quarterback in fantasy football, and that's despite the fact that he only has a 2% touchdown rate. That's unbelievably low. It's one of the lowest rates in the league. Last season among all relevant quarterbacks, the lowest touchdown rate came from Josh Rosen, just to give you some context, at 2.8%. So Kyler Murray doing what he's doing in fantasy football, despite this touchdown rate, that's going to positively regress and they get Atlanta and then they get the New York Giants over the next two weeks, two really plus matchups for, for Kyler Murray. He's a perfect buy candidate. Yeah, the matchups for Kyler Murray can't be any better going forward, and he, he's been really, really good, so you can trust him over the next few weeks. Arizona's defense, it's not good. They put they allow so many points, which means Kyler Murray is forced to put up so many points. Murray in a good spot going forward. Another player JJ is buying here this week, Josh Gordon of the Patriots. It's kind of a process of elimination. Antonio Brown comes and then goes. Phil Dorsett comes and and then goes. Julian Edelman's been banged up. Rex Burkhead as well. Josh Gordon seemingly the last man standing on a Thursday night faces the Giants. Yeah, you know, I don't think that you're going to get wide receiver one production from Josh Gordon or anything like that. But over the last three weeks, he's seen at least 20% of New England's targets in each of those games. He leads the team in air yards. So the peripherals are there. Uh, I, I think that he should perform better moving forward than he has to start the year. It's been a bit of inconsistency for Josh Gordon, but the target share has been there. If he can convert a few more of those receptions into touchdowns, everyone would be very, very happy with Josh Gordon as their wide receiver three. One more player that J.J. is buying here this week is Buffalo's John Brown. Once again, going with someone on a buy, because if you could afford it, it's time to do it. Yeah, exactly. I love buying players who are on a buy because you can usually get them for cheap. And John Brown right now, he's having low-key kind of a great season. He's top 10 in the league in receiving yard share. Uh, he has at least 15% of Buffalo's targets in every game played. And then look at Buffalo's schedule when they come off the buy. They get Miami right away. That's a plus matchup. They get Philadelphia, another plus matchup. Washington, another plus matchup. Cleveland, not a terrible one. And then Miami again. So those are five pretty good matchups. Coming, after the, coming off their bye. Uh, so I like John Brown as someone that you can get right now. Absolutely. John Brown, whether it's low-key or, or right out there, he's been awesome, and he's just been reliable, as is Cole Beasley, for that matter, for Josh Allen and his crew. If you can get John Brown for, well, not all that much on a bye week, might as well take advantage. Go out and get him now. Well, we are done with the players that we're buying. Let's move on to the three players that we need to sell, and that takes us to Los Angeles, where we had a lot of questions over the past couple of weeks about Austin Eckler and his value in Melvin Gordon's back. Well, Gordon returned to action this past Sunday, and, Melvin, and all Austin Eckler did was as the second most amount of catches of a running back ever with 15. But the game script was all about Austin Eckler. What's his role going forward, JJ? Yeah, you know, I think that he can still be a receiving back, but let's not forget that uh, before that game this past week, Anthony Lynn came out and said that Melvin Gordon wasn't going to see his full workload. We have a larger sample size of Melvin Gordon being the workhorse back in this offense. Last season, when both players were healthy, Austin Eckler averaged about nine touches per game. I do think that Austin Eckler deserves to see more touches given how he's performed to start the season, uh, but even still, we shouldn't expect a 38% target share week in and week out for Austin Eckler. Uh, I do think that the snap share is going to uh, uh, bounce upwards uh, for uh, Melvin Gordon moving forward. Um, but even still, uh, you know, Austin Eckler coming off a pretty good game. He should still be a lower end RB2, higher end flex moving forward. Um, but if you can sell this performance, I think it's not a bad idea. Absolutely. This is the opportunity to go out and sell what Austin Eckler did because you know he just can't repeat that going forward. You should do it. He did line up at wide receiver more than he has through the first four weeks. And he'll have the chances, but just not as many, certainly around the goal line as he had through the first quarter of the season. Melvin Gordon is back, which means Austin Eckler's arrow clearly pointing down. Another player that J.J. is selling here is the Ravens' Mark Ingram. How come? 
Yeah, so I, I like to look at yards versus touchdowns because generally speaking, players who see a lot of yards, they score a lot of touchdowns as well. Um, and then you can also spot regression. And that's really what we're spotting with Mark Ingram right now. Based on his yardage total and looking at data over the last five years and how running backs typically score, given the amount of yards that Mark Ingram has, he should have about half the number of touchdowns that he has. So that is a number one uh, reason to sell Ingram because there is regression coming in the touchdown column. But then on top of that, his peripherals and his usage really are, aren't great. They're not bad, but they're not unbelievable. They're not as uh, you know top six running back unbelievable like he's ranked right now. There are 20 running backs with a higher running back rushing share. 45 of them have a higher target share. So I think all of that combined, you know, I, I think that Mark Ingram is going to be usable moving forward in fantasy football. Don't take this the wrong way. Um, but right now is a good moment to sell him high. Yeah, the numbers bear out that Mark Ingram may not have as many touchdowns going forward as he has. Ingram, a perfect stale candidate at this moment with Lamar Jackson as his quarterback. Mark Ingram, if you can get something nice for him, consider moving him. One last sell player, and this is the most obvious one of the week. It's Will Fuller, who had a monstrous game, as a lot of people predicted that he would in a tasty matchup against Atlanta. He finally had the big game many of his teammates were waiting for, his fantasy owners as well. It's not going to get any better for Will Fuller, who has proven to be very inconsistent. But you know Deshaun Watson trusts him. What would you sell him for? Yeah, that's the thing. You know, I think that Will Fuller can still be a lower end wide receiver two, higher end wide receiver three moving forward because the peripherals were there heading into that game. Like you said, it was somewhat predictable. He was 12th in the league in air yards. He had pretty strong target share numbers week in and week out leading up to that game. But if you can sell this performance in some way and get a really usable piece, then obviously do it. Will Fuller's not going to see a 48% target share week in and week out. He's not going to find the end zone three times and almost five times in that game. So I think Will Fuller is an obvious sell, but at the same time, just play the market. Just see what you can get and see what other, even what Will Fuller owners are saying, because at the same time, people might just be looking to only sell Will Fuller. And I do think that he can be usable moving forward, but overall, I think that most people will see him as a sell candidate. Yeah, he, it's not that he's not useful, as you said, but it's that inconsistency that's just very frustrating to know when to deploy him and when to keep him on your bench. There's nothing wrong with Will Fuller, but if you could sell him off this monster game, you may want to take the opportunity and do just that. That's going to do it for us here on the Fan New Hurry Up. JJ, best of luck this weekend, and we'll talk to you next week. Thanks, Greg. Appreciate it. Tomorrow on the show, Jim Sinos will stop by, and I'll talk to Frank Stanfield in regards to Daily Fantasy this weekend. Have a great night. Enjoy the baseball playoffs, and we'll see you back here tomorrow.